I just love this man's work. I love his knowledge. I just love everything about uh, him. And uh, he's uh, he's on Twitter and Instagram at Winhorst ESPN. He is ESPN NBA insider Brian Winhorst. How are you, Brian? You're picking up on me. I thought you were talking about somebody else. No, come on, man. Uh, it's been a while since we've talk- talked. I just, again, I-, I tell you this every time. I love our chats. I just love the way your brain works and your information, and, uh, and I-, I love chit-chatting. Uh, our poll question of the day, Chris Brockman, why don't we just start this one off with uh, Windhorse to-, to kick this one off, tip it all off. Go for it. Yeah, real quick. They uh, faced off last night, Brian. Who would you rather build your team around, Luca or Zion? Man, that's a great question. Um, I- I- you have to qualify it by saying that Luca is two years older, so when you you can't compare them today, you have to think about where Zion would be in two years, responsibly. Even though I love what Zion does, and I can't, I love watching him play, responsibly in the way the game is designed today. I'm trying to, you know, this is like a visceral question. I'm trying to give an analytical answer. Um, you, you know, the perimeter player and the healthier player. Uh, although the fine, the funny thing is, Luca's got more injury problems than Zion recently. So you would go uh, after oh, Luca. Sorry, all when it's all said Luca, and done, sorry. you'll take Luca. Yeah, he is amazing. Yeah, man. begrudgingly. I mean, begrudgingly. has he even worked out better? More, has he even surprised the Mavericks? Do you think? You know, if you watch last night's game, his hand was bothering him. He's got a bad thumb. His ankle still isn't right. They're giving him back-to-backs off because his ankle isn't right, and he made four plays in overtime in the course of about. I don't know, maybe about 90 seconds of game time, maybe two minutes of game time that were just A1A world-class plays. Uh, And I'm not talking about, you know, step-back threes, pocket passes, tipping out an offensive rebound. I mean, he just does so many, so many things. And, you know, you look at his statistics, he's on the growth curve. You know, guards, we usually don't see them really hit their stride until year three or four because learning to play guard takes so much in the NBA and you usually see a huge upswing in stats. So his statistics, even from last year when he was one of the best rookies we've seen for rookie of the year, his stats are way up this year and I suspect he's going to keep going up on that curve. And uh, is Zion and it, it, you know, obviously it's so difficult to come from 10 under 500 and essentially five games back and catch a, a an eighth and final playoff spot for a team, but uh, Zion has definitely closed the gap, if you will, in a rookie of the year voting with with Morant. One would say he has no shot of catching him, though, right? For that award? Yeah, probably not. I mean, I would say to you that my vote is still open. You know, two years ago, I voted Joel Embiid. Uh, he played 31 games. Um, he did not win. Malcolm Brogdon won. Uh, but I I felt confident in that. I felt I felt that Embiid was the best rookie. Um, I know it's not best rookie, it's rookie of the year. I understand that. Um, because Ja has been so strong, and not only that, they're playing much better now, and he's playing great. Um, I, I want to say that I could still see myself voting for Zion, but it, it's going to be hard, especially if – and not because of anything other than Ja has been great. And I think there's a good chance the Grizzlies are going to make the playoffs. And considering they were a team that we thought might be tanking at the start of the season – him leading that is just a remarkable accomplishment. Brian Winhorst here on the Rich Eisen Show from ESPN. So Steph Curry comes back now, and um, a very simple question is why? I mean, why in the world would a team that is in the running for, if you will, the most ping-pong balls to set themselves up for the future bring in uh, somebody like Curry back? Why is this happening? Three reasons. Number one, now the teams that finish one, two, or three at the bottom all have the same odds. So it's not like it was years ago where a win could cost you 10 percentage points on giving the top pick. Secondly, and Steve Kerr has brought this up, you know, uh, the, the people at the Chase Center play, pay a lot of money, and they want to see Steph Curry play. And part of this is business. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, there's, there, you know, you're, you're, you're there to entertain your fans, and um, Steph Curry wants to play. And the, and the third one is something that Greg Popovich, I think, has taught all of his players who played for him and Steve Kerr fits in that for sure. Greg Popovich believes that there is no such thing as a wasted game. If you watch Pop over the years, he does some of his most important work um, in blowout situations either way. He coaches to the very end and not in an annoying way, like he calls timeout down seven with 10 <laughs> seconds to go. Yeah, right. But, you know, sometimes like you'll say, well, where did. 
this lineup that the Spurs are playing in this playoff game, where did the, where did this lineup come from? Oh, it came from those three blowout games where they lost back in in January. Um, he decided to to do this, and and so Pop just believes there's nothing wasted, and Steve Kerr I think believes the same thing. There's nothing wasted that even in these few games that he would have potentially with Andrew Wiggins and some of these young guys who they're trying to evaluate, we can just scan past it in the scores and say, oh, they won by 15, they lost by 17, they lost by 25. He doesn't believe that. And I think all of those are factors as they made this choice. So the fa- should we read into this? I'm just connecting dots here. The anti-tanking scenario that the NBA put into place last year that cost, if you will, the Knicks Zion or – had Zion land in, in New Orleans, uh, in a way, uh, or should have given a <laughs> better chance for the Knicks. The anti-tanking rule that the, 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 the worst three are all have the same percentage has led to Curry's return, in a way. I think, it I think it's playing a, a playing a role. It's certainly playing a role in that he's going to probably play a representative number of games. But I advocate for another NBA rule change that I think that the Warriors would be amazing in this case is I advocate for there to be a play-in tournament um, where the seven top seven teams in each te- in each conference make it as as normal and everything move on. And then there's a a, sim- a single elimination eight team in each conference. Eight, eight seven teams make it. Eight teams would play in a three-game single elimination play-in and like like a conference tournament where. You know, some team that's at the bottom of the American East Conference could get hot next week and win their way in. And can you imagine if, and, you know, I, I think, this, you know, it would all be at a central site. I say put it in Vegas, put it in Washington, D.C., put it in Seattle, put it in Louisville, wherever you want to put it. And can you imagine the excitement level that existed if the Warriors could still play their way in? You know, Clay Thompson, you know, might not have shut it down for the season in that case. I think it brings a whole new element. The, the NBA has discussed something like this and tabled it because they don't have the support. I firmly think that it's a, that it's a really good idea. And I think the Warriors this year are a great example of both of both cases. All right. Let me, let me spend a little bit more time on this. Brian Winhorst here on the Rich Eisen show. So did you say single elimination or it'd be best of three or, or what? No, 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 no. Single, single elimination. You okay. Play it, you, 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 you played over five days, each conference, but you, 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 You'd play a back-to-back in the quarterfinals and semifinals and take a day off and play the finals, and you stagger the two conferences so it goes over five days. It's a completely new television product to sell, and you reduce the amount of games in the regular season. The reason they can't reduce the amount of games in the regular season, Rich, is because they don't want to lose the money. Sure. Well, imagine if you had a brand-new television product to sell. I mean, why do college um, – why do in, in in football? Why do colleges have conference tournament or conference to championship games? Money. That's right. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is more representative of making the NCAA tournament? Playing eighteen games over three months to win your conference, or playing a conference tournament over four days in a central city? It's a, it's a season long. But why do they have the conference tournament? Money. Money. Yeah. Right. Right. So. So why wouldn't you and, – and people love the single elimination aspect that exists. A couple of years ago, we had the last game of the regular season. We had Minnesota play against Denver in a play-in game for the last seed. Just right. as it turned out, they happened to be playing on the last day of the season. Right. It was one of the most exciting regular season games of recent memory. Right. The game went to overtime. It was amazing. I remember. Why couldn't you create that? And not only that, but you you re-engage the fan bases. Like if you're if you're a fan right now – of the Knicks, you know, what do you what do you care about what they're doing? But if they had an opportunity to play their way in, imagine how you might view it differently. And of course, if they get beat in the first round, they get beat in the first round. But um, it's also a way to go to cities that you'd like to develop for the future. You know, the NBA is really interested in developing Mexico City, for example. Well, you could go to Mexico City for something like this. You could go to Seattle. You could go to to Las Vegas, or you could play it in, in established cities. You know. Uh, um, to me, this is something that the NBA – they've looked at this on and off over the years. They've gotten serious about change. We just saw how positive change the All-Star game was. Right. Um, they, they need to be proactive about this, and I just think that the Warriors – it's not going to be that way every year. Um, and by the way, your, your, your reward for doing this is you get to go be the eighth seed, and, you, and the other team, the number one seed, has now had five or six days of rest while you're playing. So the number one – the, the, you know, you even want to be the number one seed because you get the the tired team uh, coming out. I just think it is something that you take the best of college basketball 
and you you, you get a revenue generating opportunity right. that creates something that the NBA can use. So then, right now, just to posit this, you're you're the Utah Jazz at 39 and 22. Um, and obviously the Rockets would have to play another game to make it an even number of games uh, between the two. The reason why I mentioned that is they're a half game behind the Rockets. Let's just say that they're that that's the seeding. The Rockets are the fourth seed, so they and everybody up would get in the, the Western Conference playoffs right then and there. But Utah would have to go against Golden State. So here no, comes no, 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 you, no. You're misunderstanding. Okay. The top seven seed. Yes. Would stay the same. I they would see. Advance for the tournament. Then for the eighth seed. For the eighth and Basically final playoff spot. So the Grizzlies would have to take on the Warriors right now. And the Blazers, Kings, exactly Spurs, right. Pelicans, Suns, Timberwolves, we'd have That's a chance exactly to see right. Zion in the eighth seed. Okay. I like it. So That's now. That's right. So and, the, yeah. and you get five days of single nation basketball um, with the with the, with the collegiate feel in markets. It'd be, it'd be kind of like a, it'd be like a conference tournament, essentially, for we'd, the NBA. So we'd start it, we'd start and, it and, right, and, and the week would probably be right after March Madness ends. So you continue with another tournament. It's just the NBA, it right? Would, it would be exactly right. It would be in early April. And the teams who advance <sighs> would get that week off to rest. And you would you would knock out the games that would normally be played in there, so you could reduce, reduce the NBA schedule from 82 to 74 or something like that, and you could maybe eliminate almost all back-to-backs during the season. So more time off during the season, and yeah, you'd have to win three games in four days to get in, but you have to do that in college now. Some of them in the colleges, you had to win three games in three days to get in. And then with all that basketball from March Madness, and if you get a, if your team gets a week off, you could be a fan that load manages your television viewing, right? You just take that. Yeah, can you imagine on your the couch demand or... for a product like this? I mean, you know, the NBA is locked up for a long time <laughs> right. on TV rights. Can you imagine if they put, you know, you know? By by the way, they would all play on top of each other, just like the NCAA. There would be, you know, three games in each conference on those days and so you would you know, just imagine in vegas oh, you know you would go to vegas oh, and be man. able to wa- theoretically watch three nba games just like you could do in college now you can watch four uh, in, in the early rounds of college can we do that this year is yeah. it too late to just i love this? this brian we're in we're in rich eisen show is yeah, in I, trust me i've been trying to sell it to new york it's it's um it's been sluggish well, not anymore. You got us. Maybe. You got us support. We're, we well, endorse I this. Your advocacy. We, we endorse. We endorse your candidacy, sir. We endorse. Unfortunately, we're out of the running. But you know, you know what I mean. In the NBA. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like, what, let's say Trey Young gets hot for three days. Oh, please. Or it's like three, three straight forty-five point games. Pops can play their way in. Plus, you know, the games at the end of the season, even in March, when you know, you know, you know, you're out of it. You know, if you're the Washington Wizards, well, it would give you an incentive to keep playing. Because you would say, well, we don't want to have the number 13 seed. We'd like to see if we can get down to the 10. It's huh. a better chance. Spike, me, Spike Lee may even come back to watch the Knicks. Who knows, right? But Spike could uh, could come to the neutral site to watch them play. That's and true. he could sit in the first row <laughs> and nobody would bother. <laughs> All right. Let's get into this last thing for you here. Brian Winhorst on, on, on the Rich Eisen Show. The sell the team movement. It's beginning. And I, I wholeheartedly in, uh, have been endorsing that for years with the Knicks fans and Dolan. I can't stand the way that this man runs the business. I think he's the worst owner in professional sports now that obviously Donald Sterling is out. So now my question for you is Knicks fans that hope that Adam Silver or the NBA front office will quote unquote do something as Charles Oakley is advocating. Is there any possibility of something like that happen? How is this being viewed uh, in New York City um, with NBA management? Brian. No way, it, you know. I mean, it was funny when, when, uh, when a report surfaced that Leon Rose was going to be the Q team president, which, by the way, were true. Uh, he put out a statement basically denying it. Um, but at the beginning of the statement, he just said, "By the way, I'm not selling the team." And I thought it was funny. I just don't know if that's going to now be his. Every time the, the Knicks release a statement, it's just going to be in there. Uh, Knicks announced a uh, bobblehead uh, giveaway schedule. By the way, Jim Dolan's not selling the team. Knicks announced, um, you know, watch party. For the draft, uh, by the way, Jim Dolan's not selling the team. Like it's like a, a total no-brainer. Not only that, um, if he were to put the team for sale, uh, you know he's got two teams plus the guards, and I know they're breaking them up, uh, did different companies and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. um, you'd need to, to just to buy the Knicks straight off. I think you'd need at least four billion dollars, and that's going to limit the amount of people who would want. I mean, you know, Jeff Bezos, if he wanted to buy a team, you know, come in and buy the Knicks, but. Um, there's not a whole lot of people out there who could buy it for that price, and and it doesn't even matter because he's not selling anyway. 
Thank you, Brian. Really appreciate the two cents here. Uh, Large sample size theater available on Spotify. That's your podcast, correct, sir? The Hoop Collective, but that was our... uh that was our, our episode last week. Okay, very good. But uh, Thank you, sir. But whatever. The, the names are just corny. Oh, just, my gosh. Just listen to it. So you know? give me, give me uh, the— you, give... you can hear more of my bad ideas. It'll be rejected by the NBA. Hey, listen, listen, man. Uh, I love the idea. It's not a bad idea at all. Like, we're all, we all can't get enough of brackets and bracketology, and then once the— How, how much time—the NFL, you know, there's like three ownership committees that sit around and plot how they can figure out how to get more games. Here's a golden plate opportunity to get more meaningful games. It's one of the things that leagues die for. And here it is right here. They're right on the table. All right, Brian. Thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. We'll chat again soon. You got it. That's Brian Winhorst at Winhorst ESPN.